Salutations, fellow readers, writers, and killers of time on YouTube. My name is Martha Jones, and I would like to use the androgynous sounds of my voice to share with you a few thoughts on mental illness versus the artistic temperament. A while back, PBS Digital Studio put their name on a video in which a slender, altogether sane woman posed an interesting question. Can we please stop treating art and mental illness as though they're related? And I went, what? If she had said something like, can we please stop acting like spousal abuse is okay if it's committed by a prodigy, or if we can stop excusing self-mutilation as part of the artistic temperament, I would have been all the way on board. But that's not what she said. The woman in the video substantiated her claim by saying that according to a 2013 study released by the Karolinski Institute of Stockholm, persons in creative professions are not more likely to suffer from mental illness than the rest of the populace. However, the study did suggest that writers are, quote, very slightly, unquote, more likely to suffer from bipolar disorder. So bipolar doesn't count as a mental illness? I don't know too many people who would trade me a weekend at Disney World for it, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know what I would say to PBS if I had him face to face, but after watching this video, I badly wanted to know, A, in the context of this video, what is a creative profession? There are some jobs that are unambiguously artistic, like cake decorating or photography, but I think a case could be made that any profession in which there is critical thinking and solving of problems that you weren't trained to handle could be a creative profession. B. What is a mental illness? If we can agree that depression, bipolar, anxiety, and suicidal tendencies count as mental illness, or certainly the symptoms, the number of reported mental illness sufferers might go up. Except the video never actually gives us a number, so make that what you will. And C. What is art? If we can agree that Vincent van Gogh, Ernest Hemingway, and Robin Williams were all makers of art, I believe the number of mental illness sufferers among their ranks might go up. Again, the video never gives us a number, so it's hard to tell. The attitudes expressed by the persons in this video are worrisome to me because most of the artists I know happen to be anxious and depressive, if not suicidal. And I don't believe I'm alone on this. After the death of Robin Williams in 2014, folks at Cracked.com released a poignant article about depression as they perceived it in their average comic writer. They stated that if they had to give a ballpark figure for how many of their writers suffer from depression, they'd have to say, quote, all of them, unquote. To be clear, I am not trying to demonize the lady who made the video for PBS or PBS itself. I feel like the people who made the video were rational, logical folks who are annoyed at the misconception and the propagation of the misconception that mental illness equals artist. On that, I agree with them. I believe that mental illness equals mental illness. In fact, I think I can strengthen their case that Mr. Van Gogh was an amazing painter in spite of his schizophrenia, not because of it. One of Mr. Van Gogh's most ubiquitous works, The Starry Night, was one in a collection he painted during his year-long stay at St. Paul Asylum before his death in 1890. The frantic strokes of the brush and the larger-than-life stars are eye-catching, and the sky in which they are hung is not the plain black of space, but great blue waves as though they could toss the stars about to and fro between them at any moment. Now. Compare that work to Starry Night Over Rhone, also by Van Gogh, painted three years prior to his stint at the asylum. Same night sky, same painter, but the brush strokes are controlled. The color palette is deeper and the objects in view are more in keeping with the scale of the landscape on which the painting was based. It's still very much an emotional piece, not a realistic one on any level, but the viewer can believe that what he or she sees and feels must be akin to what it felt like for the two lovers in the foreground on a romantic walk along the Rhone by starlight. So, was Van Gogh in a healthier state of mind when he painted Starry Night Over Rhone than when he painted The Starry Night? That's hard to say. Even today, it's hard to say how long people will grapple with their own mental health maladies before they seek help. What I'm trying to say is Van Gogh was a skilled painter who happened to be sick a lot. Schizophrenia was not to him what the radioactive spider was to Peter Parker. He was not some mild-mannered Dutchman whose arch nemesis whooped him with a crazy stick and turned him genius. My guess is, like most art produced by depressive, schizophrenic, autistic, bipolar, anxious, or suicidal persons, the art Mr. Van Gogh produced in his right-ish mind came from a phenomenon the psychologists call sublimation or the channeling of negative and unacceptable impulses into behaviors that are positive and socially acceptable. In other words, art equals not punching people slash not going to jail. 
In those cases, the mental illness does cause the art in a sense, because the artist has turned the artistry into a coping mechanism. Just as a boxer might work out at the gym, or a chef might experiment with a new croissant recipe in order to decompress, negative feelings such as that suffered from people who have habitual suicidal thoughts or abrupt mood shifts in bipolar may be partially dispelled by painting or writing when suffered by the artist. I've watched the PBS video in question a couple of times trying to process why it bugged me so bad. And I think the reason it irritated me more than the average YouTube outrage fest is because mental illness is still highly stigmatized and often invisible. If an artist with anxiety, depression, or something else gets told by enough people for long enough, you're not normal and you're not special, get over yourself and act right, do you think that person is more or less likely to make art again? Do you think that person is more or less likely to open up and get help for his or her mental illness? Also, PBS, for better or for worse, is viewed by many people to be a credible source of information. If, gad forbid, they got something wrong, large sectors of the populace would be disinclined to fact-check its content the way they might do with another source. Anyway, to sum up, if you are an artist, or in fact anyone at all suffering from depression, bipolar, etc., I'm pulling for you. Please persevere and love yourself enough to learn some good self-care habits if you've not already done so. With a good support system and some patience with yourself, it can get better over time, I promise. If, on the other hand, you happen to be among the lucky ducks who are happy and well-adjusted, that's fantastic. Blaze a trail for the rest of us to follow. And if you haven't seen the video of which I speak and you'd like to see who pisses you off more between PBS and me, I'll be sharing the link to their thingy in the description below. As always, thank you for watching. If you saw something you liked, please oh please hit the like button and I will talk to you at an opportune time. Take it easy. Loves you. Bye.